Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you the Tukey Kramer procedure for a one-way or one-factor ANOVA. Now remember as I've noted over here that this is done only if you rejected the null hypothesis in the one-way ANOVA test. And remember quickly what the one-way ANOVA null hypothesis was. It was that the first mean, in this case I have, if you've noticed I have four groups, four populations, so it's going to be mu A is equal to mu B is equal to mu C is equal to mu D. And the alternative hypothesis, I'll just write it down here, is at least one inequality. And we went through this at some length in the previous video. Um, so, in this case I'm saying, what if you ended up rejecting the null hypothesis? So we reject HO. What to do next? Now, first of all, if you remember, in a one-way ANOVA, what you're, the null hypothesis is saying is that all the groups have the same mean. And if you reject it, you're saying that at least one of these in this case there's four, has a different mean than the other ones. Now, what that's saying is a lot in one statement. They could all be different than each other. In other words, this mean could be different than this mean, could be different than this mean, could be different than this. One of them could be different on the, than the other three, and the other three could be the same. Two of them could be the same and the other two could be the same but then that those pairs are different so the point here is that there's a lot of possibilities of at least one inequality and so if you reject HO and you conclude at least one inequality it might be interesting to find out which pairwise comparison results in a difference between the means in other words is mu A different than mu b, right? That's one comparison we can do. Another one is mu a different than mu c, right? Another one is, is mu a different than mu d? Another one's mu b different than mu c, and we can keep going. Actually, there's quite a few tests to do, even when you only have four groups. All right, so we set up this table here, and we're going to go through this table in a second. Let's first just take a look at the results from our one-way ANOVA here. Here's the output. We have a p-value of 0 0.007, so clearly here we ended up rejecting HO. So this example is ripe for doing a Tukey kramer multi -compar multiple comparison, okay? So we rejected HO. Now we'll do a Tukey Kramer. Okay, so the setup. First of all, we have four groups or four levels of our factor. There are 40 total observations. So these are going to be necessary later when we get our Q value from our Q table, student, studentized range Q table. Okay, so I set up this table over here, and here, the column names are comparison, absolute difference, critical range, and results. All right, so first off, in the comparisons column, I want to list every possible pairwise comparison. In other words, A to B, A to C, and so forth, until I've exhausted all the pairs. Now, just as a rule of thumb, if K is the number of groups, or let's say is, if C is the number of groups, or number of populations you're dealing with, then you, sh you should end up here with C times C minus 1 over 2 rows in this column over here. In other words, there's this many pairs. So for us, that's going to be 4 times 3 over 2. So that's 12 over 2. We're going to end up with 6 pairs. 
Okay, so let's list all those out now. A to B, A to C, A to D, then B to C, B to D, and C to D. It should round it out. Let's count. Yes, indeed, there are six, and that's all of them if you check. All right, so we got to perform six comparisons here and this table is going to organize things for us. So the first thing you want to do is to list those out and then calculate the absolute value of the difference between the sample means of each group. So let me write that out. So for example here I want to do x bar a and here's x bar a minus x bar b because A and B are the groups I'm comparing. Okay, and then I want to take the absolute difference. So in other words, I want to end up with only positive values in this column. The way you do that in Excel is to use the ABS function. Okay, so we're going to do mean of group one minus the mean of group, sorry, of group A minus the mean of group B. Okay, and then let me quickly just fill in the rest. A sample mean to C's sample mean. Let this always be your guide. A minus D. Okay, now B minus C. So that's a real small difference. B minus D, and finally C minus D. Okay, so I got all my absolute differences. Now I want to move on to this column called critical range. But before I do, I need this is where I'm going to need a table called the Q table. So I have this table over here. You can also Google this. It's called the studentized range Q table okay and it's got all these the values from the table for different levels of numerator degrees of freedom and denominator degrees of freedom okay so let's first let me first give you the rule for figuring out degrees of freedom so here I'm gonna put the numerator degrees of freedom the numerator degrees of freedom is just equal to the number of levels or groups so here I have four groups so I'm going to end up with four degrees of freedom okay so four. the denominator degrees of freedom is equal to n which is the total number of observations across all groups minus C which was the letter I used if you recall for the number of levels so we have 40 total observations here and four groups so that's 40 minus 4 36 degrees of freedom okay now we can go to the Q table and get our Q upper critical value all right so again if you don't have this table you can just grab it offline okay um, so our numerator degrees of 4 and our denominator degrees of freedom we need to scroll down a bit and you'll see a lot of times you will not find the exact degrees of freedom because the table in order to be to fit on one page they start jumping values once they get to the bigger degrees of freedom and that's because the values change very slightly now when this any anytime this type of situation happens choose a lower degrees of freedom because this will give you a more conservative or safe result so in this case we have four numerator degrees of freedom and 36 denominator degrees of freedom so we don't have 36 it goes from 30 here to 40 so we're going to choose 30 because that's the next lowest so we go this way and this way and our Q value is 3.84 now let's take that back to our other sheet 
Okay, so 3.84. All right, now we're going to need that in the calculation of our critical range. All right, the way you calculate your critical range is so start with equals. Actually, let me write this down in a formulaic view first. So it equals the QU value from the table that we just got times the square root of the pooled variance. So S squared pooled. This is a subscript. Pooled. Okay. If you don't know what this is, you need to go back and watch the one-way ANOVA tutorial video. Okay. So this, this piece right here comes directly from the ANOVA. Okay. So you already have the numerator value. All right, divided by n dot, and n dot for me is the number of observations in one particular group. And as you can see in these examples that I've done, including this one, there is an equal number of observations in each of these groups. Namely, in this case, there's 10. Okay, So this is the formula to get the critical range when you have an equal number of observations in each group. Okay, So let's go ahead and calculate that. So equals the QU value we just got from the table. Hit F4 to lock that value times. Now we need to start up the square root. In Excel, it's SQRT. And now we need to do the, we need to get the, the pooled variance. Okay, so let's click there for now. Just leave it blank. We need to go back and get that. Divided by n dot. And n dot was 10. Okay, so let's click there. All right, so let's update this. S squared underscore pooled. If you recall from the previous ANOVA videos, that was just the average of the individual variances from each group. And I've already have this column, this row here. Okay, so there's S squared pooled. You can also get it from the ANOVA output under mean squared within group variance. As you can see, these numbers match up. All right, and n dot is just the symbol I use in my classes for the number of observations in one particular group when you have this unique situation where e there's an equal number of observations in each group. Okay, so that we can just simply count any one of these groups. Take the first, and there's ten. Okay, as you can see, our formula here updated itself, but. Let's do it again because that might have been a little confusing. Again, QU value, lock it, F4. The F4 key on your on the top of your keyboard. Times SQRT. The pooled variance, which you have from your ANOVA output or you calculated it manually, divided by N dot. Close parentheses and you'll get 20.003. Just pull it down. That value should repeat. We should have locked both of these. So lock every reference in this formula should be absoluted and then drag down. Excuse me. Okay. We don't need this many decimal places. All right. Two or three is fine. Now the final thing to do here is just to read off the results. If the absolute difference is greater than the critical range, then the result is that these two pairs have a different mean. So in this case, mu one, mu a is not equal to mu b because the absolute difference between the two is greater than the critical range. Next, 
again, mu a is not equal to mu c because the absolute difference between the two sample means is greater than the critical range. Third row, ah, here mu a is not significantly different than mu d. So here, these two don't, do not have a significantly different mean. All right, and then we continue this process down. We see that the last four comparisons, these guys, all result in a no, uh, not being significantly different. All right, we could do a little if function if you like to make this process automatic. We'll say if this is greater than this, then means significantly different. And then if not, we could say means not significantly different or yeah, or just not significantly different. All right. As you can see, let's the first one is significantly the first pair is significantly different. Second pair is, and you'll see the last four are not significantly different. Interesting. Okay? So the ANOVA told us that there's at least one inequality between among these four groups as far as their means. Okay? Then by doing a Tukey Kramer procedure Kramer procedure, we saw that the actual actual difference was not between every single one of these groups it was actually due to the groups A to B and groups group A to C all the other the other four comparisons were actually not significantly different all right so this is how you drill down and do a multiple comparison to the Kramer procedure and take your one way or one factor ANOVA analysis one step further Hope this was helpful. Make sure to subscribe. You will need the studentized range Q table to get this value. So just Google around. Okay, they're, they're not that difficult to find. And uh, comment. Till next time, have a great day.